Welcome to the 97th Theoretical Physics Colloquium by Dr. Violetta Sagun uh, from the Center for Physics of the University of Coimbra, P Portugal. She received her PhD in 2015 in Theoretical Physics from Bogolubo Institute for Theoretical Physics in Kiev, Ukraine. She had several postdoctoral positions. She was uh, a little bit as a junior research a researcher at Bogolubo Institute for Theoretical Physics, then went for a postdoctoral position at the Institu Institute for uh, Superior Technica at University of Lisbon. I should have probably found a translation of that. And uh, since 2019, she's an assistant researcher at the Center for Physics of the University of Coimbra, Portugal. She received several um, awards over the years, uh, two different prizes of Shallust Fund uh, for young researchers in 2014, uh, Eugene Wigner Diploma for the best new talents contribution at the International School of Subnuclear Physics in 2015. She was the winner of the Ukrainian Presidential Scholarship for Young Scientists in 2016 and 17, the first prize winner for the poster at the Quark Matter Conference in uh, Thessaloniki in 2017, best talk uh, for at the Young Scientists Conference in Ukraine, in Kiev, Ukraine 2017, and perhaps a few others that I'm missing right now. Uh, she is uh, serving uh, on the editorial board of uh, Journal Particles since 2021, a member of the Einstein Telescope Collaboration and a member of Square Kilometer Collaboration uh, since 2020, uh, 2021. Her research interests include neutron uh, and hybrid stars, uh, quark stars, compact star mergers, uh, strongly interacting matter uh, and equation of state of QCD, high energy nuclear collisions, dark matter, and today she will be talking about the impact of dark matter on compact stars. And with that, I'll give uh, the microphone to Vilar. Thank you very much for the invitation and for nice introduction. So today I will talk about the impact of the dark matter on compact stars. And I will start with the accumulation of dark matter in compact stars, how dark matter could be accumulated inside the stars. And then I will focus on the effect of dark matter, so on the mass radius, uh, of compact stars on tidal deformabilities and waveforms uh, during the mergers of compact stars or neutral star cooling or heating effect. And then I will present one model of fermionic dark matter and one model of bosonic dark matter. And then as the last part, I will focus on the numerical simulation of dark matter against compact stars and how dark matter could affect the merger dynamics. And then I will summarize at all talk and conclusions. So for many years, the direct searchers for dark matter are trying to find a definitive answer about the, the hidden sector or in, of our world, but still we don't have a clear answer. And that's why astrophysical probes are very important. And in this context, compact stars are a very good object because of their strong gravity. But before the formation of the compact stars, the, the star goes through the different stages of its evolution. And during all the stages, that matter could be accumulated. So at the beginning, the progenitor, uh, during the formation of the, of the star in photoclouds, already could be a mixture of dark matter and uh, the baryon matter. And uh, dark matter undergoes scattering process with the baryon, losing energy and tonalizing at the end. Then during the main sequence star, uh, also dark matter could be accumulated uh, from the, uh, all the area around the star. And uh, depending on the position, is it closer to the galaxy center or it's further away, it could be a different accumulated mass of the dark matter. So if we consider the most central part of our galaxy, the mass accumulated uh, during the main sequence star is around 10 to the minus 5 minus uh, 9 solar masses. 
Um, it was obtained this value for the uh, most central part of the galaxy using uh, profiles of the dark matter in our galaxy. For example, ANASTO or Nav Navarro Friend Quai profile. And uh, here from the left plot, you see that the density of dark matter in the most central part of the galaxy are many orders of magnitude higher than the density of the dark matter uh, in the, its outskirts. So we expect a higher dark matter fraction closer to the galaxy center. Then during the, the supernova explosion, we don't know, it depends on the particular model of the dark matter particles. Dark matter could be created during the supernova explosion and be trapped inside the star in, in, in the core. Um, but uh, what we can say that newly born neutron star after the supernova explosion should be surrounded by the dense cloud of dark matter with a temperature and a radius that corresponds to the previous stage, to the last stage of the main uh, sequence star evolution, which means it's a, it's a star of the, the silicon core. And finally, if we have already the stage of equilibrated neutron star, again, depending on the, on the position of the compact star in our galaxy, we could, the star could accumulate different amount of dark matter which is uh, more or less the same values for the main sequence star, 10 to the minus 5 and to the minus 8 solar masses. So then, as I said, depending on the nature of the dark matter, it could be accumulated in the core of the star, making very dense core, or it could create very dilute and extended halo around the neutron star. And uh, two components, uh, if they, uh, when they have the, they have gravitational interaction, so basically they mix together, they overlap. And uh, depending on the nature of dark matter particles, whether or not it's in the dark matter core or the, in the dark matter halo, we would see different effect on the neutron star properties, particularly on the mass and the radius. Mm -hmm. So if dark matter is accumulated in the core of the star, we would see a decrease of the maximum mass and observable stellar radius. And you can see it from the plot on the right. So for uh, all the, the bunch of equations of state, we see absolutely the same uh, behavior. So adding 5%, this is a plot for 5% of dark matter, we see a decrease of the, max, of the maximum mass and all the mass of the star and decrease of radius. Uh, contrary, beha contrary behavior we would see in the case of the dark matter halo, we would see increase of the maximum mass and increase of the outermost radius, while the baryonic radius would stay the same. And uh, it's uh, uh, very naturally to consider no interaction between baryonic and matter and dark matter, as the, uh, there are many, many orders of magnitude uh, different. So, if they, uh, the interaction is very weak, we could easily consider that coupled, uh, they coupled only through gravity. And it means their energy momentum tensors are conserved separately. And we can write the tom of again Volkov equation for two components separately. So there will be one equation for the baryon matter component, the second one for the dark matter component. And then we will have a mass, which is a total mass, the sum of the, of the mass of both components of two components and the pressure will be a total pressure. And um, we uh, also can identify the amount of dark matter in this, inside the star as the fraction of dark matter. So the fraction of dark matter is the mass of the dark matter component divided by the total mass of the, of the star. Also, we could see an effect of the dark matter on tidal deformabilities. So the tidal deformability parameter lambda uh, depend, uh, that depends on the outermost radius and the total mass also would be different for different scenarios. In the case of the dark matter core, when the radius of the baryon component bigger or equal to the radius of the dark matter component, the outermost radius will be the baryonic radius. In the case of the dark matter halo, the outermost radius will correspond to the radius of the dark matter component that will be much bigger than the radius of the baryon matter component. And then tidal deformabilities would also be affected in a different way. So on the left plot, you can see a tidal deformability for dark matter condensed in the core for one, three, and 5% of dark matter. And they are shown here in color. The black curve corresponds to the pure baryonic uh, equation of state with induced surface tension. And we see that 
uh, adding more, more dark matter, we see like effective softening of the equation of state. We see that uh, tidal deformabilities are decreasing. And uh, in the case of the dark matter halo, we will see the opposite uh, situation. But I want to also to point your attention that if we have a two fluid system and we have a mixture of two different components inside the star, the speed of sound should be also calculated for the two fluid system. Uh, yes. Another effect it is one of the fluids. Uh, so the dark fluid does not have sound at, on, of its own, right? So there is only one sound. They don't uh, interact with yes. because either they interact only through gravity, uh, so it means that they have their own speed of sound. Each component has its own speed of sound. But it's not a fluid; it is not collisional, right? So, in other words, okay, maybe you explain it later. Why if, not a fluid? It's a because if particles do not uh, interact, it is not really a fluid. It is, uh, but dark matter could interact with, each other, with itself. It could be self-interacting dark matter. It could be, OK. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, what, what could be another effect of the dark matter is uh, the effect of dark matter on gravitational wave form. So the first, uh, the, the first uh, research showed that if dark matter is condensed inside the core, we could expect some, diff some new peaks in the gravitational wave spectrum uh, during the neutron star merger, that it will be clearly distinguished from the other peaks. So in, in the case of a very symmetric, symmetric system and mass of two components uh, are equal, we could see one additional peak that it will be uh, purely because of the presence of the dark matter core. And in the case of asymmetric system, uh, we could expect two, uh, two other peaks. So this is the, just the first research that shows that there could be some features, some new uh, uh, features of the gravitational waveform just to, because of the presence of the dark matter inside the star. And also, we could see different uh, effects for symmetric and asymmetric dark matter particles. So in case we will have, uh, we have asymmetric uh, matter, it means that the particles and, and dark matter particles and dark matter antiparticles are not annihilating. Uh, it means that this dark matter would be accumulated inside the star. And uh, it, it, then the it depends on the nature of, uh, of this dark matter particle. If it be a fermionic uh, dark matter, then the Pauli blocking may prevent them from collapse to the black hole, and it will be enough uh, for the equilibrated star. In the case of the bosonic dark matter, uh, there should be some uh, self-interaction between the particles, uh, because at zero temperature, uh, bosons could form Bose-Einstein condensate, that could lead to the to the gravitational collapse of the bosonic dark matter and formation of the black hole. Uh, but on, other, on the other side, we have observations of old neutron stars. So it, it gives us already the constraint that this is not happening. The, the gravitational collapse of the bosonic dark matter, it's, it's not the case. So it means if you consider the bosonic dark matter, we need to include self-interaction. In the case of symmetric dark matter particle, we would have annihilation uh, of between the particles and antiparticles, which could be seen as uh, some uh, in the X-ray uh, spectrum, gamma ray, or it could be annihilation to neutrino, and you could see it with neutrino telescopes. Another effect that also we could see uh, while looking on the surface temperature and the compact stars is the late time heating. So if dark matter uh, is symmetric and it uh, annihilates inside the star, it could increase the uh, surface temperature of the stars, particularly the old stars. But for this, let's go to the equation of the thermal balance of the compact star to understand where it comes from. So on the right hand side, we can see two different uh, 
uh, emission terms. So the first one is due to the emission of neutrinos from the from the all star volume. The second term is, to, is uh, due to emission of the photons from the surface of the star. So these two terms provide the cooling of neutron stars, while neutrino emission and photon emission. Then if we have some source of heating, for example, annihilation of dark matter, then we would have one more additional term that will heat up the star. In the case of any other uh, for example, axions that could also take uh, energy from the star will have one more term that will help to cool down the star even more. So if we have additional uh, emission source, we will add it to the right hand side. And on the left hand side, we have a, a derivative of the temperature multiplied by the heat capacity. So this is the, the equation for the thermal balance of the compact stars. And if we fix the mass of the, of the compact stars and consider different cooling process, we could see different cooling curves. So the, the, the upper one, the blue curve, corresponds to the modified Urca process, a very slow cooling process. Then adding superfluidity, superconductivity, we could have some medium, this green uh, part, the medium cooling. And if we include, include some very intense process like uh, uh, exotic matter or direct turka, we would see this drastic cooling, so this red part of the, of the, of the plot. At the same time, we can fix the mass, which, which I show here on the right plot. We can fix the mass of the star and model different cooling curves for different stars. And the idea is to reproduce all this experimental data, all this data points that, that we have. And uh, by adding more the emission, emission channels, we could modify this curve. So what could be different emission channels? We can consider some light dark matter particles like axions produced, for example, in nuclear membranstrahlung that would take energy from the star. Or it's a new axion produced in Cooper pair breaking and formation process. It also will, will cool uh, cool down our neutron star much faster. So these two processes, creation of axions and emission of axions, will decrease the surface temperature of the star. And this was the uh, two works showing that depending on the coupling constant of axion with uh, uh, nuclear matter, we could we could really see a change of the of these uh, cooling curves. Um, and uh, varying, uh, varying this coupling constant, we see change for the middle uh, middle age stars. We see that the, the 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 lower the coupling constant, the lower the surface temperature. And the opposite effect: dark matter could could annihilate inside the star, heating the uh, star, and we would see it for very old stars with the age 10 to the seven, 10 to the eight years. In this study, uh, the, the, the people of this article considered WIMPs. So they considered annihilation of WIMPs that would heat up the stars at very late stage, so to very old neutron star. The effect will be visible for the old stars. And these different curves produced for the different uh, density of dark matter, so different fractions of dark matter inside the stars. The higher the dark matter fraction, the stronger heating we, 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 we see. And on the, on the uh, plot on the right, you can see that this the same calculation were, were done for, the, for our density inside of our galaxy. So this is the distance from the galaxy center. And uh, the closer we are to the galaxy center, as I said, the bigger the fraction of the dark matter. And we expect uh, more effect of heating for the old stars. So to answer to the question whether or not we see this effect of heating, we need more stars from this, this, uh, uh, this part. So we need stars, you see, very old part of the population, which unfortunately we don't have so much nowadays. So to answer to the question whether or not there is this additional heating due to the annihilation of dark matter, we need more observational data of old neutron stars.
Um, I would like to show you the, the periodic dark matter model, which was a very simple model. Basically, we consider dark matter to be the relativistic Fermi gas and non interacting particles as we not have. So, asymmetric fermionic dark matter. For bosonic component, we consider the equation of state with induced surface tension that reproduces all the nuclear matter ground state properties, heavy ion collision data, proto flow constraint, astrophysical observation, and also tidal deformability constraint. And in this study, we're particularly interested on the effect of dark matter on the mass and radius on the compact stars. So the main point is that we know two neutron stars with mass around two solar masses. And we wanted to study the constraints on the dark matter properties, that like fraction, mass, uh, and its ability for dark matter co uh, mixed compact stars to reach the, the two solar mass limit. So we considered at the beginning a very light particle with a mass 100 MeV and quite heavy particle with a mass one J. So we, you, you can see here the black curve, the pure baryonic matter equation of state, and two more curves with three and seven percent of dark matter. So for the light dark matter particle, you see that adding more, more dark matter, we see an in, increase of the maximum mass, which is not the case for heavy dark matter. So having having more more dark matter in the neutron star uh, core, we see decrease of the maximum mass and also decrease of the radius. To see why it's the case, we plotted the energy density profile, again, for the light dark matter and for the heavy dark matter particles. But we uh, split it the, the baryonic matter component, which is shown here in blue, and dark matter component, which is shown here in black. So for light dark matter particle, we see that the baryonic component vanishes at 10 kilometers, how it should be. But the dark matter component continues for much longer. Here is the very long tail. So you, uh, if we will zoom in to this, to this small part of the tail, we would see that for 1% of the dark matter, the radius of the dark matter component is twice the radius of the baryon component. And for 3% of dark matter, the radius of the dark matter component equals 235 kilometers, which brings us to conclude that light dark matter particle creates the very dilute and extended halo around the, the baryon star. And for the dark matter particle, we see that the baryon component vanishes at 10 kilometers, but the dark matter component uh, vanishes much, much earlier at 100 meters. So for heavy dark matter particle, we see a tendency of condensing inside the core and creating very dense dark matter core. And uh, we could see it also in tidal deformability. So again, we, we can plot here the, uh, the, the, the dark matter core and dark matter halo. And we could see the tidal deformability. So having dark matter core, we see an effective kind of softening of the equation of state. We also could see it from the mass radius uh, relations. And having dark matter halos, we would see an increase of the tidal deformabilities. Uh, so we wanted to, to see what would be the limiting case for the fraction of dark matter that still would reproduce two solar mass constraints. For this, we plotted the maximum mass as a function of the fraction of the dark, of the dark matter for different dark, um, masses of the dark matter particle. So we considered 100 MeV, 174 MeV, and 1 J. So we see that for 100 MeV, which is shown here in red, we always above two solar mass limits. So we always in agreement with two solar mass constraint. For 174 MeV, we see a decrease of the maximum mass with, the, with increase of the fraction of dark matter. It reaches exactly two solar mass and start to rise again. So this is the 174 MeV is a limiting case when we always in agreement with two solar mass constraint. And for one uh, GV particle, we see that we are in agreement only up to the certain fraction. So when we increase the fraction of dark matter, we at some point we already are not in agreement with the two solar mass constraint. And uh, uh, as we know, the two solar mass constraint is pretty robust constraint. Let's fix this value and show on this plot. So the two solar mass stars, the maximum mass equal to two solar mass uh, stays exactly, oops, sorry, exactly on this black curve. 
So we plot here the fraction of dark matter as a function of the mass of the dark matter particles. On this black curve, we have masses, maximum mass exactly equal to two solar masses. Below this curve, all the, the, the range of the fractions and mass uh, gives mass above two solar masses. And all this range of parameters above these black curves is a not allowed region, so we always below two solar mass pool. If we, in addition to this, we plot the tidal deformability constraint, so the lambda to 1.4 solar mass should be equal to or lower than 800, we would also uh, see that uh, the big halos are not favored by the tidal deformability constraint. So then we would see that the allowed region of parameters uh, is this area between the, the below the black curve and the red curve. And on, uh, after that, we did an estimation of the fraction of dark matter in the most central part of our galaxy. So considering the stages that I showed in the very beginning, considering the different stages, the genital main sequence star, uh, calibrated inference star, and summing up all the, all the amount of uh, accreted uh, dark matter that we could have in the most central part of the galaxy, we could put some we could put some estimation of the amount of dark matter in the most central part of the galaxy, and it's 0.01%. So it corresponds to this horizontal line. And if we will take a look on the of the cross of this horizontal line with the black curve, we see that it, it gives us a constraint of the, on the mass of the dark matter particles equal to 60 jeff. So it means that if in the most central part of the galaxy we would see the neutron star with two solar mass, with maximum mass equal to two solar mass, it would give us the constraint on the mass of the dark matter, matter particle, which should be below, uh, below 60 J. But uh, this is the again the, the, the estimation of the amount of the dark matter in the most uh, central part of the galaxy is uh, not precise. So for this, we need uh, to know the better the accumulation regime, the supernova stage, which is pretty unknown. And uh, we're looking forward for the measurements of the mass and radius of compact stars, and especially simultaneous me measurements of the mass and radius in the most central part of the galaxy that would answer to this question. Um, the, one of the most interesting objects uh, that uh, we saw during the, in the, all the bunch of mergers uh, so far, it's uh, GW190814, especially the second component. This was the merger of a black hole with mass around 23 solar masses. And the second component, which the nature of which we really don't know. So the mass of the second component was 2.6 solar masses. And... Uh, uh, this object uh, goes exactly in the mass gap that uh, this object could be basically explained uh, as the neutron star, but very exotic uh, matter, for example, or a black hole. But uh, it's a matter of fact that many models of the baryonic matter, they failed to reproduce two solar mass, uh, 2.6 solar mass neutron star. So to, to explain it like a compact star, for example, we need to add some exotic degrees of freedom, like hyperons or quarks, some very strong first order phase transitions, or very high spin to, to be able to reach 2.6 solar masses, or some extra stiffening of the equation of state at high densities. Um, but at the same time, it could be also the black hole that goes inside the, the, the mass gap. Alternative scenario is that it's a dark matter admixed compact star. As I showed before, because of the creation of the halo, we could have an increase of the, of the maximum mass because of the accumulation of the dark matter. And uh, considering the previous model, the fermionic dark matter, non-interacting fermionic dark matter, we could explain this object, the secondary component of GW190814, as the dark matter admix compact stars with a dark matter halo, quite big, but still the loot extended halo, that gives this increase of the, of the maximum mass. 
The second model uh, is a model for bosonic dark matter. Uh, and uh, we propose the new dark matter model uh, of uh, self interacting uh, bosonic dark matter, uh, asymmetric bosonic dark matter that includes vector interactions uh, mediated by the uh, real vector field and uh, the pressure and energy density for this model is shown here that depends on the MI, which is an interaction scale. Uh, the, this MI is the ratio between the mass of the uh, omega field divided by the coupling constant. Uh, the pressure also depends on the mass of the dark matter particles and the chemical potential of the dark matter particles. And for this model, also, we, we uh, write different fractions of dark matter to see its effect on the mass radius relation. And we also see effective softening of the equation of state for, with increase of the dark matter fraction. And um, uh, we, we looked on the effect of, uh, of the dark matter for the different equation of state. So we considered the induced surface tension equation of state, which is shown here in as a black solid curve, and also did the two equation of state, which is shown here as the uh, as a dotted black curve. We added one, three, and five percent of the dark matter, and the fact basically uh, we see the same softening of the equation of state if the dark matter is accumulated inside the core. Uh, from the energy density profiles, we also see that the dark matter is vanishing uh, much before the, the, the baryon component is vanishing. So dark matter is creating very dense core inside the star. And the same effect we would see also in tidal deformabilities. Uh, another interesting effect that is said, the dark matter will, uh, will impact the neutron star binary evolution will affect the, the merger dynamics and also could affect the uh, ejecta of the, of the kilonova. So uh, we did the first two fluid 3D simulation of coalescing binary neutron star, uh, neutron star system admitted with dark matter. Uh, as a first step, dark matter component was considered as the mirror dark matter. So it's just the first simple case. So near dark matter is the, the dark matter candidate that basically just uh, a, like a parallel world, has the same particle physics as our observable world and couples to, to a baryonic matter through gravity. And the baryon component we modeled with the SLY equation of state. So we considered uh, three different masses, 1.4, 1.3, 1.2 solar mass stars with three different fractions of dark matter, 0, 5, and 10% of dark matter. So in total, we did nine simulations with different masses and different fractions of dark matter. In these two columns, you can see the uh, initial density of the baryonic matter and density of the dark matter component and the radius of the, each of the stars. Um, so uh, the general conclusion is that the higher dark matter fraction, the longer would be the length spiral. And uh, we, will, we think this is due to the uh, lower deformability of dark matter at neutron stars. And uh, at the same time, we plotted the gravitational wave bounds and frequencies to see uh, the remnant and uh, how, how the, the evolution goes on. So for 1.2 solar mass stars, we see that for the 10% uh, of dark matter, which shown here in green, we have a prompt collapse of the black hole. But for the 0 and 5% of dark matter, we have hypermassive neutron star, which leaves for 20 milliseconds. For 1.3 solar mass stars, we see uh, for, for 5 and 10% of dark matter, we see a prompt collapse to the black hole. While for 0% of dark matter, we see a hypermassive neutron star that survives for 10 milliseconds. And for higher uh, system, for 1.4 solar mass, we see for any fraction of dark matter, we see a prompt collapse to the black hole. So the general conclusion that we can draw from this, that addition of dark matter reduces the lifetime of the merger and, the, and uh, favors the prompt collapse to the black hole. 
from this uh, table, you also can see the mass of the ejected material calculated in two different ways, the mass of the disk and the, the, the merger frequencies. So the conclusion that we can draw from this is that with increase of the dark matter fraction, we have a decrease of the disk mass. And for higher dark matter fraction, we have a faster formation of the, of the black hole after the merger, harder to eject material from the bulk of the star prior to the black hole formation. And uh, lack of the ejector and debris disk is related to the concentration, uh, this concentration in the neutron star core. In this plot, uh, this is the, the contour plots for 1.3 solar mass stars and 5% of dark matter. So you see in, in color the, uh, the density distribution for the baryonic matter. And in the contour plots, we have uh, there is the, the dark matter distribution. So we see the dark matter is, con is uh, condensed in the core uh, that basically forms the collapse to the black hole. Okay, let me go to my conclusions. So I showed you the dark matter can be accumulated in the core of the neutron star. And in this case, we would see a significant decrease of the, of the maximum mass and radius of the star. In the case of the halo, dark matter halo formation, we would see an increase of the maximum mass in the outermost radius. Uh, the secondary component of GW19 is rate for thin binary margin could be explained as dark matter admits compact star with the dark matter halo around the binary component. I also showed you that uh, in different parts of the galaxy, the, the dark matter uh, density is, is different. And uh, by changing the position of the neutron star in the galaxy, the accretion of dark matter rise, and if which in turn we would see it in the different mass, radius, style, deformability, and surface temperature. So we might see a, a mass and radius change depending on the position of the stars in our galaxy. As a possible way, how, how we could detect the dark matter or smoking guns of the presence of dark matter, here I, I pick up the most uh, probable uh, ways how we could detect it. First, by measuring mass, radius, and moment of inertia of neutron stars with very uh, high precision. So to see an effect of the dark matter, we need a high precision measurements of the mass and radius of compact stars, uh, and especially in the most central part of the galaxy. So for this, we are looking for, for the, the present and the future radio telescopes, such as NeoCAT, SK, and so on that plan to increase the radio pulsar timing and discover more compact stars in the most central part of the galaxy. From the X-ray telescopes, we are, uh, we are hoping to have more precise measurements of the mass and radius of compact stars, especially simultaneous ones, uh, again, for the different position of the neutron stars in the galaxy. If dark, dark matter is condensed in the core, we would see a mass and radius reduction of the neutron star towards the galaxy center. In the case of dark matter halo formation, we would see the mass increase towards the galaxy center. But on top of this, we could see some variation of the mass and radius in the different parts of the galaxy that could be related to some inhomogeneities, local inhomogeneities of the dark matter in our galaxy. As a second way how we could uh, probe the the, the, the dark matter in compact stars is by performing binary numerical relativity simulation and kilonova ejector for dark matter admits compact stars. But for this, we need to consider different dark matter candidates, different particle mass, interaction scale, and fractions of dark matter inside the stars, and further compare the gravitational wave forms uh, with, the, with the gravitational wave signals and the electromagnetic counterparts. And of course, we're looking forward for the future LIGO Virgo, Virgo Kagra uh, detections. So, neutron star into star merger, neutron star black hole mergers would be very useful uh, in this uh, uh, context. And the smoking gun for the presence of the dark matter would be any supplementary peak in the characteristic gravitational wave spectrum, some exotic waveforms, or maybe modification of the kilonova ejector. Uh, 
also we are looking forward for the next generation of gravitational wave detectors like Cosmic Explorer or Einstein Telescope that would probe the post-merger regime and then we could answer more about the internal composition of the compact stars. Another smoking gun could, uh, could be a detect detection of the object that go in contradiction with our understanding. As a potential candidate for this, it could be the dark matter mixed to compact stars. So it could be the second component of GW19 direct 14. Uh, it could be some other objects, maybe in the future, that would contradict to our understanding. So it could be the potential probe, potential smoking gun. And also high and low surface tension of neutron star towards the galaxy center. So we need more statistics on the uh, neutron star cooling. So we need more statistics on the uh, surface temperature of the compact stars, especially in the different parts of the galaxy. Uh, that could answer the question whether or not there is annihilation of the dark matter or maybe emission of any dark matter particle that, uh, that cools down the compact star. Thank you for your attention. Um, thank you very much for a nice presentation. Now we'll have some time for questions. So let's start with Matthias. Matthias Sanowska. Uh, so yes, hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks a lot for the really nice talk. Uh, I have a question in respect to the binary neutron star merger simulation. Uh, you showed uh, the density profiles. Oh, yes, exactly. Um, mm -hmm. Um, I'm thinking about, um, um, did you look at the rotation profiles also? So how the structure of the differential rotation is, is inside the star and especially um, to, to show it maybe separately for the dark matter core and the hadronic matter. Do you understand what I mean? Yes, we need to look on it. Thank you very much. We will, yeah. we will look. And it was another, just the first step. Yeah, so we, we will yeah. plan to continue yeah, yeah. this. And another question is, um, did you look at the spectrograms of, of your uh, emitted gravitational wave profiles? Uh, one slide bef before, yes. Um, so at um, um, how the structure of the F2 peak, for example, is so, so the different frequencies at different post merger times. No, we also did, did look on this. Uh, okay, it would be maybe oh, thank you. Thank you interesting. Um, are these simulations for the uh, smaller dark matter core or the bigger ha halo? So just for the dark matter cores, you can see that five and uh, ten oh, okay. percent of dark matter. It's only the core. Uh, definitely, dark matter halo would have a different, uh, the different behavior, different impact of the merger. Mm -hmm. So far, this is the results for the core. Yeah. So, um, just one question: D Did you maybe find something like that the dark matter core rotates faster than the hadronic core for some time? Because it's more compact and probably, and this you would then see by having two different F two frequencies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So maybe you can look into that. Okay. Thank you. We will take a look. Okay. Okay. Next question, Edward Chirac, please. I, uh, I understand what you were speaking about and ask about something you didn't. How uh, I don't understand how dark matter get trapped in the neutron star. So, if it is particle of the order of uh, GeV mass, uh, there are these underground experiments. I do not follow them much, but I remember they have cross sections ten to minus forty five centimeter, very very small cross sections. So, these particles will fly through neutron star without capture. I would how, how we capture dark matter? Yeah, so the, 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 the limit on the cross-section tends to the minus 45 centimeters square, squared. And this is what we have here. So this is the oh, okay. number one. So considering this, the, the, the different densities, so rho is will be our density inside of our galaxy, for example, density of the dark matter. 
and also having the cross section with the the, the, the baryonic matter, we can estimate the accumulation uh, mass of the accumulation of dark matter. So despite the fact it's super super low, we still can the, because of the strong gravity, neutron stars still can trap dark matter. But what that is precise what I don't understand. Gravity doesn't help. It's just potential well and a, yes. uh, a bullet with large energy come through, right? It doesn't, but gravity by itself doesn't trap. You need friction. Without friction, it doesn't stop. You still need a little bit of interaction between the baryonic matter and dark matter. Right, so, so if all these brackets are one, you get 10 to minus 14 of solar masses, right? In your formula. So it is very small. Yeah. But that's for this for this you need very high density. So that's why we are looking for the most central part of the galaxy. In okay. the sun so environment, yeah, so, yes. So the let sun the bracket be low. one. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this 0.3 GeV per cubic centimeter is roughly what dark matter density is, right? This is in our in sun environment. Oh, I see. So it can be larger, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but okay, so so it gives very small cross section. So we need we need some other type probably to to capture. But this GeV particles which have this very small cross section is very hard to trap. Well, but she gives the estimate ten to negative five solar masses. So if the density in the uh, galaxy at the center of the galaxy is much larger than point uh, three, then of course this mass will be much larger. Yeah, I'm just trying to understand how then minus five come from formula one. Which of the brackets is large, in other words? Some of the brackets should give 10 orders of magnitude, uh, right? Yes, yeah, so when we take a look on the left plot, we have this the, the density of the dark matter in the, the central part. I see, so you have goes how 10 many? to the 11, 10 to the 10 uh, GF to centimeter cube. Yeah, I see. So here we have, we will have because of the most central part of the galaxy, this bracket, the first bracket. Will so be... this first bracket can give you 10 orders of magnitude, I see. Mm. Yeah, but this is just um, the ordinary accretion. But as I said, in the in the first point, the progenitor, we expect that already during the star formation in the early universe, there was already the, the dark matter. So it was already the, the proto, proto cloud was already a mixture of dark matter and bionic matter. As a second uh, additional contribution, mm. Dark matter could be formed during the supernova explosion and create mm. very high densities. So it's and another source. maybe related question to this. So what's the difference between compact star and ordinary star? All these uh, factors are more or less the same, right? Yeah. So, so, so ordinary then... stars will also get a similar capture then. Yes, first, the, um, the main sequence star has a uh, quite long lifetime. So as you see, so the first, the, there is a time. Mm -hmm. The last year. So, you know, the, the, the lifetime of the main sequence star is quite uh, quite long. And also the mass. So my oh, main sequence star also is massive. Uh, it, and it's bigger, the radius of it is bigger. So it's not so much a, a, a per, per volume, it's trapping not so much efficiently like a compact star, but because of the big uh, radius, it's more we have more of the same values. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Okay, next question is from uh, Debbie Chatterjee. Go ahead, please. Uh, hi, thank you very much for the a very interesting talk. Um, I had a question about uh, the last slide. So uh, where you mentioned the uh, different smoking gun uh, evidences for dark matter. So I'm just wondering, even if we measure the mass and radius um, like very accurately, for example, will it be able to really give a constraint on dark matter given the large number of models and also degeneracy with other kinds of exotic matter in neutron stars? Yes, yeah, so this is the yeah. thank you. That's a very good question. So as I showed here, so we have, we see a kind of effective softening of the equation of state if we in case for the dark matter core, and it will be stiffening kind of uh, effective stiffening for the dark matter halo, which we could consider like an effect of the dark matter. So so far we cannot distinguish between the the the, the, the baryonic matter properties and an effect of the dark matter. So so far it's. Um, yeah, so far we cannot answer to this question. 
how we could uh, try to split the effects of the dark matter and bionic matter is to look on the on-ground experiment and to look on the astrophysical objects. So on-ground experiments, they are not affected by the dark matter, but astrophysical uh, like compact stars could be affected by the dark matter. So this is how we could split an effect. So by studying like, I don't know, like effect, like experiments like PIREX, uh, or some nuclear matter experiments, the other nuclear matter experiments, they will tell us information about the barony component on the ground, which will not be affected by the dark matter. And that, that comparing with the compact star properties, we could try to, to, to split the effect. Thank you very much. Okay, next question, Jose Jimenez. We cannot hear you if you are speaking. Now? Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, hi, Professor Violet. It was a nice presentation. I have three short questions about your slide on neutron stars mergers with dark matter. And the first question is about the electromagnetic emission in that mm -hmm. kind of mergers. Uh, the, the dark matter component affects a usual neutron star merger. So with the we see that for uh, for increase the fraction of dark matter we have uh, more for, uh, the, the increase of dark matter over the collapse of the black hole because dark matter in particular in this case we con we consider dark matter condensing the core so the dark matter core favors collapse to the to the black hole. Um, so in this uh, sense, yes, it affects. So we we don't see so much. You see the, the clear patterns for the the kilonova ejector, but we see that the presence, the the, the increase of the dark matter fraction favors the favors the collapse to the, to the black hole. Okay, and the next question is about in these simulations you consider some uh, viscosity or dissipative effect for and dark matter, or they were only supposed to be in the in a in a perfect fluid limit. Yeah, perfect fluid limit. Ah, okay. Uh, for weakly interacting matter, though, a per, uh, perfect fluid perhaps is not the best approximation, though. Anyway, uh, what was your question answered, though? Yes, I think so. They consider the perfect fluid right yeah. now. In the future, have, maybe they will. Yeah, consider. just the first. Yeah, it's just the first step. So we have to continue to consider better, like more physical dark matter candidates, and consider the effect hello core. So this is important. Okay, and my last question is about that in this kind of neutron star mergers with dark matter, they favor the nucleosynthesis of heavy elements or or not. So with, with, with this study, we can see that uh, again, is if is it favors the prompt collapse to the black hole, there would not be the the kilonova ejector. There will not be we would not see the the heavy elements uh, nuclear synthesis. Uh, by considering other candidates or dark matter halo, I expect we would see effect in the kilonova ejector and nuclear synthesis. But again, we need to do the numerical relativity simulations for another candidates for dark matter and dark matter hello. I expect we would see it. Okay. Okay. And that will depend on the if dark matter is fermionic or bosonic, right? Or... Exactly. It will also depend on the okay. self-interaction, so on the coupling constant of the dark matter, which will affect on the, uh, the mass of the dark matter will be also affect so yes. Okay, thanks. Okay, next question, da David Alvarez. Go ahead. Uh, uh, hello, everybody. Hi, Violeta. Thank you for the nice talk. I have a comment, more than, more, or sort of a question. Uh, when we consider the nicer uh, observations, I do believe that there might be some, uh, how to say, uh, special features because uh, the halo that uh, we can assume that might be rotating or not at the same frequency as the as the compact star may have some gravitational effect in the in, when we consider the gravitational redshift of the star 
Uh, this is actually very important for the people who model the, the measurements that do this spatial analysis to, to determine the, the radius of the compact star. So I think uh, th there might be, I mean, that there should be some uh, special studies to try to figure out if, if uh, dark matter is there or not, and if, if it's there, there might there might be a, a special study required for for reporting the the radius of these stars that are studied with the nicer uh, detector at the International Space Station. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for the comment. I also think that in the case for dark matter halo, um, if it's not very dilute, of course, if it's like 100 kilometers, maybe it will be too dilute to see an effect. But if it would be smaller, 20, 30, 40 kilometers. We could see some uh, light bending, or we could see some effects in, in the halo. So this is also interesting topic to study. All right. In the case of very big halo, halo like 100 kilometers, I think it will be too dilute, and our measurements are not so precise to see an effect. Maybe I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. it could be but I would expect a bigger effect from radius like 20, 30, 40 kilometers. All right. Okay, um, any other questions from the audience? I do have one clarifying question, which was confusing me a little bit. Uh, when you were discussing uh, dark matter with the mass of uh, one GeV, uh, this is accidentally very close to the proton neutron masses. And therefore one would naively think if you consider uh, the masses of in that range, uh, the equation of state will be like non-interacting nuclear matter. And that means that for small masses, 5% of the nuclear of the neutron star, you would really have just like the tail of the uh, mass radius relation in the regular nuclear matter. And it will be very, very large object not very compact like a fraction of the neutron star size so what am i doing wrong thinking that way i mean like if you can see that fermionic dark matter which would look like the the baryonic matter yeah the same mass the same yeah yeah and basically what i'm saying you will be on the tail of this uh, mass radius relation far far to the right which will be very large not very small and somehow you have it very small yeah, the difference that dark matter would be condensed, that it will be very condensed in the core, while we have the, the, the baryonic matter is more, like, not so dense, it's more distributed. That's why we will have a change of the energy density profile of the star, and which we would see in the mass radius profile. So it will affect the whole mass radius profile. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So essentially, because you're the saying the... Distribution. The baryonic matter itself, which is concentrated, will pull it in and make it more compact. Yeah, so dark matter will sink inside the core. I see, I see, I see. Okay, okay, that, that perhaps makes sense. Um, okay, I see another raised hand, actually. Uh, David, you forgot to lower the hand or you have another question? Okay, it's gone. Uh, Mileto Graziano, you have a question, go ahead. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, thanks for the conference and the congratulations. I have two trivial questions. First question, since matter is ejected from neutron stars, why is there no accurate estimate of the error on the masses of neutron stars? And second question, the density of dark matter undergoes relativistic effects. What are they? So those, those were the sure. questions. I'm not sure I understood the questions. So the second question, I think I heard uh, clearly that it was, it was what are the relativistic effects? Yes. Uh, and the first question, I've, I'm afraid I also kind of uh, didn't hear Why it quite. Why the no accurate estimate of the error of the masses of the neutral stars? Of the error? Hello. Ah, hello. hello. You mean for the merger? Uh, yes. For the mer we did mergers only for the dark matter condensing the core. We didn't consider so far the, the, the halo distribution. So we consider just five and 10% of the dark matter that will condense in the core and you see it from these uh, contour plots of the density profiles. We still didn't consider, we still, still didn't, didn't make a mergers with the dark matter in the halo. It's still in the future. 
And the second question about the relativistic effects for the for the dark matter. Yes. I'm not really. I didn't get the question. So basically, I suppose, uh, if, uh, what are the relativistic effects that appear in the tolman oppenheimer volker equation? I assume ah. that's that's perhaps the question. Mm. Yeah, it's just okay. So we have just a second fluid. We consider the the the, the, the two basically we, we we consider the mixture of two fluids, the baryonic and the dark matter, and uh, then. Uh, the, 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 the same two of equation just split it for two components. So it, the second component basically behaves uh, more or less the same as the baryonic component. They just couple through gravity and uh, they behave from the same way. Okay. So it will be only okay, gravitational okay. contribution because they interact only through gravity. So then we will see an effect on the like gravitational contribution. Okay, um, any other questions? Any other questions from the audience? I don't see any raised hands anymore, so I'll use this opportunity to thank Violetta for a nice presentation.